WT. Now it's time for the six o'clock show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you've had a good week. The big news in the broadcasting business was, of course, the appointment of Sir William Rees-Mogg as chairman of the new body set up to keep sex and violence off the airwaves. Bad news for Rainbow and Blue Peter. And uh, for the six o'clock show, in a way, because we were going to bring you a report on a recent survey about women's bedroom fantasies. But I can tell you that Robert Redford was the favourite, followed by Richard Gere, Bruce Willis and Dirty Den. The suggestion of Danny Baker and Chris Tarrant got a few laughs and I got the sympathy vote. Oh well. <laughs> the other exciting news is that it's been proved that it's legally possible by clever investment for a person to earn £1 million a year and pay no income tax at all. Now, I can send you details in a plain brown envelope for the small fee of £35,000. While you write out the cheque, I'll tell you at no extra cost what is in tonight's show. We shall be meeting the man who speaks out for the One bad more. boys of television. We'll be talking to the people who are paying £35,000 to freeze their bits and bobs after death. My case is a bit too late. We'll also be instructing each and every member of our studio audience here in some Michael Jackson-style dance routines and hearing about a controversial solution to some of the area's traffic problems. Here's Emma Freud, careers out of writing soap operas and others find fame and fortune acting in soap operas. But one man may be on the threshold of stardom simply by watching soap operas. If you fancy yourself as a bit of a buff, have a pen and paper handy. First, here is Emma's report, in a few seconds anyway, and it's like this. hard day at work. He's looking forward to an evening relaxing and watching a bit of telly. Here at his home in leafy downtown Leighton. <laughs> Only Chris doesn't just watch a bit of telly, he watches soap operas. And not just some soap operas, he watches the lot. Over Uncle Albert, we really are. Soap after soap after soap after soap after soap. And being Britain's number one soap addict certainly eats up his spare time. It's about 15 to 16 hours a week. That's a good week. That's a lot of viewing. Mm. Which is your busiest day? Thursday. What's on then? Emmerdale Farm, EastEnders. And I watch Fork and Crest, Neighbours and Santa Barbara. Have you ever missed an episode? No. Never? Never. It all began when Chris was only four years old. The evening story of Peyton Place. One glimpse of Peyton Place and he was hooked. What did your school friends think of you? I never let on then. Didn't you? No. You were like a sort of closet soap yes. actor. <laughs> did, they, did they find out later on though? Oh yeah. And what sort of reaction did you get? I thought it was a bit loony. <laughs> Did that bother you? No, I probably am. <laughs> <laughs> These days, nothing is allowed to get in the way of a good soap. People know not to ring now, no, not to come round. If, if somebody was to drop in, what would you do? Just ignore them? Mm -hmm. You shouldn't talk to them? Mm -hmm. Not a word? Not a word. Not a syllable? Nope. He won't take his eyes off the screen for a moment, not even for his mum. Have you ever tried talking to him while he's watching a soap? <laughs> they don't know now. Why not? Well, he goes, shh. In fact, Mrs. Stacy is usually banished from the room. I go out some sit in the kitchen, innit? And sometimes I do the crossword or I do my bingo. Letty the dog is allowed to stay, but only if she sits still. Chris did go on holiday once to Barbados, but it caused so many problems he's vowed he'll never do it again. 
I bought about £100 worth of tapes and just distributed them to the various friends and got them to tape everything. Did they mind? <laughs> I bought back a lot of scotch that time, I can tell you. <laughs> How long did it take you to catch up? From 11 in the morning till 2am at night. Solid. Of course, the great thing about having a video is that Chris can keep his favourite episodes. That is probably the Rover's file and the Dynasty wedding. How many times have you seen them all together? I'd say about 50, 60 times. But even a dedicated soap addict has to take a break sometimes, and like everybody else, Chris enjoys a drink down at his local. Only wherever Chris goes, his telly goes too. Well, now, a few soapy facts from my colleagues. Yeah, I was just looking at that, that bloke, um, Chris Tosi, has actually written this book called Super Soaps. They're all in here. Minnie Caldwell, Carlos the Chef, Conceptor Hewitt, they're all here. Conceptor? Uh, Conceptor Hewitt. At uh, 16, Barbara L. Geddes, that's uh, Miss Ellie, was expelled from school for being a delinquent, it says here. Miss Ellie, one of the main scriptwriters on Dynasty, desperately wants to introduce the storyline where Fallon has a space alien's baby. Pretty credible oh, yeah. stuff so far. Incredible. You, you, you actually turned up in one. You were telling me earlier. I walked briefly into Crossroads once and they kept it in, yes. Wait, yeah. tried to book a room, did you? No, no, I didn't know. I actually appeared. I just sort of wandered past and they said, oh, well, nobody will spot it. This bloke walking past, no stay there. <laughs> I also nearly once took over from Ironside. He was cool. fed up with being pushed around. But that's uh -huh. not uh -huh. Yes, yes. 